Here's how to very quickly set up the Lighting Switcher plugin. First, drag and drop from the package into the Unity file and click Import. Now that's done, we're just going to navigate to Lighting Switcher, Prefabs, and we're going to drag the Baked Lighting Manager into the scene. This scene is just a very basic Unity scene with several static objects with light maps. Just the kind of thing you would expect to be baked normally. Once the Baked Lighting Manager has been put in the scene, just right click it, Prefab, and then Unpack completely. So the next thing we're going to do is click on the Baked Lighting Manager. And we're going to use these convenient buttons to pull all static renderers and to pull all reflection probes from the scene. You can notice that's going to make a few of our uh, errors that we had before disappear. Now we've done that, we're ready to bake lighting. What I like to do is keep a folder and have inside it each different lighting condition to be turned on and off. In the scene, I have a basic day and night, which are just two static directional lights. So I'm going to start by baking my daytime lighting. I'm just going to enable the daytime lighting. And then I'm going to say it one, name it as day, and give it its variable name, day in here. Now I need to just go to the regular lighting panel and generate lighting. I'll come back once this is done. So that's it finished baking all the lighting now. All we're going to need to do is go to the tutorial scene folder. It's going to create next to our scene. It'll have the same name as whatever your scene is. And we want the grey map. So I'm just going to duplicate all of these. Because Unity will actually um, delete them because it's going to try and bake over what you did before. I'm just going to move them to the scenes folder. I'm going to create a new folder and call it day. Because these are our light maps for our daytime lighting condition. I'm going to move them in there. After I've done that, I'm going to click on the lighting state for daytime, lock it in here so it will move when I click on these light maps, and then drag them into the light maps folder. After I've done that, I'm going to click on bake reflection probes. Alright, now I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the second lighting state. Nice and easy, I'm just going to disable my daytime lighting, enable my nighttime lighting, go to the, the lighting panel and generate lighting. And I'll see you back when that one's done as well. Okay, the bake is done, I'm going to create a new folder called night. I'm going to go into the tutorial scene folder. It's replaced all of our maps, so you can see they're a lot darker, but they're always still going to be grayscale. I'm just going to duplicate these again, move them to night, and then I'm going to go as I did before, click on the state 2, name it as night, click on the inspector, name the variable night, lock the panel here, grab all these maps, drag them up, drop them into the light maps. I'm going to click switch to this state skybox, ensuring I have a skybox set down here in the material section. And once it's changed, I'm going to click Bake Reflection Probes. All your reflection probes are going to be put in a folder called Bake Cube Maps, and they're going to have names based on the probe that they are and the lighting state they belong to. Now, these are our lighting states completely set up. We just want to click in the Bake Lighting Manager. I'm going to unlock this panel again so I can see it. And I want to make sure that these lighting states are already in this section here. This is Lighting States. It's going to be our zero lighting state, our one lighting state, and they're already here because of the way the prefabs come out. If I wanted to add a third lighting state, I could just lock this panel, duplicate the nighttime state or the daytime state and then drag it onto the lighting states, and then that would be element two. And all I would need to do would be repeat the process that we went through before, adding the lighting maps and reflection probes and skybox to that lighting state. But as you can see, everything here is filled out. We have the reflection probes and the renderers and the lighting states. Everything is all good, and there's nothing under the current errors section. We can even see we have five different line maps. Now our lighting setup is completely set up, really, but we have a few optional features we can add. We can add some state exclusive objects. So I'm going to add a couple of cubes, and I'm going to make these two cubes state exclusive objects for daytime. What that means is they're only going to, oops, let me lock that. What that means is they're only going to display when that lighting state is active. So I know you should only use dynamic objects in here, but you can really put anything in, even dynamic lights. Whatever material you have set in this box here is going to be set as the sky box when you change the lighting condition. And you can also switch the state's light box and state's light maps just in the editor using the convenient utility buttons. If we don't want to use a sky box, we just want to keep our scenes regular sky box, all we need to do is untick reset sky box, and then the script will not update to new sky boxes when it runs. It will just keep the old original one that you have set in the lighting panel. So now all that's set up, we just need to interface for the lighting manager. And we can just go into the prefab section here and drag out this light switch UI, which is a pre-designed UI you can use. Uh, to switch between lighting conditions if you don't want to write your own. So all we need to do with this is go into the lighting switch UI, go to state 1, and we need to drag and drop the manager into this script here. And let's go and do state 2, and let's drag and drop the manager into this one here. It's going to set the lighting to your lighting ID here. So if you go into the big lighting manager, you can see element 0 is daytime, element 1 is nighttime. So state 1 is going to be day, and state 2 is going to be night. It's good to name your files, just keep track of your buttons. We can change the text on the buttons, nice and easy. Night. And day. These buttons are just gonna work, just like that. And if you do want to interface with the script in any other way, 
you can just put this lighting ID on any object, reference the big lighting manager, and then call the function set lighting condition within this script, and it's going to set it to whatever the value is set on that script. Now while that's set up, let's just jump into the game and give it a try. By default, it's going to set the lighting condition to whatever you have the selected as on the big lighting manager. But then I can use these buttons to sort between day and night nice and easily. You can see the reflections change on there from day and night to whatever we have the reflection probes as. And we can also see that our dynamic objects we've set only exist within the correct state. And that's basically it. That's the whole tool. It's that easy to set up. Thanks for watching. If you bought the tool, thank you very much. And I hope this video helped you with a pain free setup. Otherwise, Hope this video helped inform your purchase. If you'd like to ask any questions or show off your work you've been making with the tool, please join the Discord. The link's in the description and I'm always around there. But until the next time, I'll see you around.